फोर्स एंड लॉज ऑफ मोशन पार्ट थ्री सेकेंड लॉ ऑफ मोशन इन द प्रीवियस वीडियो वी लर्न अबाउट द फर्स्ट लॉ ऑफ मोशन एंड सॉ द रिलेशन बिटवीन इनर्शिया एंड मास इन दिस वीडियो वी विल लर्न अबाउट द सेकेंड लॉ ऑफ मोशन एंड हाउ इट इज रिप्रेजेंटेड मैथमेटिकली We have already learned that due to the application of an external unbalanced force on an object its velocity changes which also means the object gains an acceleration We will now learn how the acceleration of a body depends on the force applied and how we can measure this force Let us understand this with some examples In a football match when the footballer kicks a ball the ball moves but the player does not get hurt However if the player were to kick a rock the player's leg would get seriously injured Even when a small object like a cricket ball is thrown with a high velocity it can hurt a person These examples suggest that the impact of an object depends on both its mass and velocity This indicates there may exist a certain quantity that combines the mass and velocity of an object. Sir Isaac Newton introduced one such quantity called momentum. Mathematically, the momentum p of an object is defined as the product of its mass m and velocity v. Momentum is a physical quantity that has both direction and magnitude. The direction of momentum is the same as that of velocity. Momentum is a vector quantity. The SI unit of momentum is kilogram meter per second. We have already seen that the application of an unbalanced force brings a change in the velocity of an object Similarly according to the definition of momentum we can say that the application of an unbalanced force will bring a change in the momentum of an object Now let us consider an example of pushing a car When a person gives a sudden push to the car it hardly moves But if the person continues pushing for some time the car may gradually gain some acceleration and start to move This shows the change in momentum of a body does not only depend on the force but also depends on the time for which the force is applied That is the force that needs to be applied to change the momentum of an object depends on the change of momentum with respect to time Based on this concept Newton proposed the second law of motion which states that the rate of change of momentum of an object is proportional to the applied unbalanced force in the direction of force Now let us study the mathematical representation of the second law of motion Let us consider an object of mass m is moving along a straight line with an initial velocity u. After the application of a constant force f throughout the time t, its velocity becomes v. We can represent the initial momentum of the object as p1, which is equal to m multiplied to u, and the final momentum of the object as p2. which is equal to m multiplied to v therefore the change in momentum will be equal to p2 minus p1 which can be written as m multiplied by v minus m multiplied by u 
Hence, the rate of change of momentum will be equal to m multiplied by v minus u, which is then divided by t. That is, the applied force is proportional to m multiplied by v minus u divided by t. F is equal to k multiplied by m multiplied by v minus u divided by t, which can be written as k multiplied by m multiplied by a. Here, a is equal to v minus u divided by t is the acceleration gained by the body, that is, the rate of change of velocity with time. The quantity k is a constant of proportionality. The SI unit of mass is kilogram or simply kg and acceleration is meter per second squared. The unit of force is chosen in such a way that the constant of proportionality k becomes 1. According to the formula, we can define one unit of force as the amount of force that produces an acceleration of 1 meter per second squared in an object of mass 1 kilogram. That is, one unit of force is equal to k multiplied by 1 kilogram multiplied by 1 meter per second squared. Thus, the value of k becomes equal to 1. We know f is equal to k multiplied by m multiplied by a. We can now write force as mass multiplied by acceleration. The unit of force is kilogram meter per second squared or newton which is represented by the symbol N. So, we saw how the second law of motion helps us in measuring the force acting on a body in terms of its mass and acceleration. Let us now look at an example that depicts the second law of motion. In a cricket match, when the fielder catches a fast-moving ball, He pulls his hands backwards after catching the ball. This helps the fielder to increase the time span so that the velocity of the ball can be reduced to zero. This reduces the acceleration of the ball, which in turn reduces the force and impact of the fast moving ball. If the fielder stops the fast moving ball suddenly, then the time span to reduce the velocity to zero will be very small. Thus, the rate of change of momentum will be greater and hence, the force that needs to be exerted by the fielder to stop the ball has to be of a greater amount. This impact may hurt the hands of the fielder. Similar examples can be seen in our everyday life. Can you think of any such examples? It is interesting to note that the first law of motion can be mathematically stated from the mathematical expression of the second law of motion. From the second law of motion, we know F is equal to M multiplied by A or F is equal to M multiplied by V minus U divided by T which can be written as F multiplied by T is equal to M multiplied by V minus U. From this equation, we may observe that when F is equal to 0, initial velocity U is equal to the final velocity V. That is, if no unbalanced force is applied, then the object will continue to move with uniform velocity u. Also, if the initial velocity is zero, then the final velocity will also be zero. That is, when no unbalanced force is present, an object at rest will continue to remain at rest. Hence, we saw how the first law of motion can be mathematically stated from the expression of the second law of motion. In this video, we learned about the second law of motion and its mathematical representation. 
in the next video we will learn about the third law of motion